In this tutorial, you will find out how Rhino Lumion Live Sync works. You'll understand how to organize your Rhino file, how to set up your Lumion materials, how to change them, and how to add and populate new models. And on top of that, you'll discover how to adjust the weather, environment, and how to export and render images with Lumion. Let's start. Hey guys, Dushan here. Before we start, if this is your first time here, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our channel as we upload new tutorials each week on Rhino and Grasshopper and how to use these tools specifically for architecture. Okay, so let's start. You probably know this project. We uh, we worked on it a lot uh, lately. So uh, this is Barcelona Pavilion by Biologic Miss van der Rohe. So let me remind you that uh, you also have this tutorial on Enscape, so you can also watch it here. In the description, in the related videos, you can find this, uh, this tutorial that we did uh, a while back and now we're going to do the same thing similar to that but with Lumion. Uh, the way that Lumion works is that the organization of the layers uh, is not quite the same as it would be in Twin Motion and Enscape. So if you take a look at my layers here you will see that uh, I divided this, uh, for example I have the surroundings and I have the building itself. And for example, if I turn off the building, everything will disappear and we just have the surroundings. So for example, uh, you can see also that I have a uh, division of the walls, I have the roof and I have the pole, for example. And uh, I divided this because that, that made the most sense to me and the organization of my layers uh, this way. However, uh, when we do this uh, in Lumion, when we import these layers in Lumion, they're not gonna be recognized the same way. So it's very important that you organize your layers in Rhino based on material. So you want to add a material uh, in Rhino first and then you want to categorize it as a separate layer if you want to keep things simple and organized. So for example, let's try, let's open up Lumion and let's see what we'll get there. So I'm simply going to click here on Lumion start live sync and let's see what happens now i'm gonna wait for my lumion to load and then we're gonna start from there okay so this is what came uh in in lumion so let's let's zoom out and let's see what what just happened so this is as you can see our model in lumion and this is how it is loaded directly from rhino uh you can notice that there is like some sort of like flickering going on and that's because my my ground level here is in the same level as lumion ground level so this is why it's flickering. So the first thing that you want to do, you actually uh, want to cut the hole in the ground here if you want to keep if you want to keep this kind of area. So for example, if you want to keep this area here, uh, uh, then you all, all you need to do is uh, simply you know create the hole. But what if, for example, uh, you change your mind and you say, okay, I don't want this to be in Rhino. I want this to be in Lumion. All you need to do is, for example, click delete and. Uh, when you go to Lumion, you will see that it will automatically be updated. This means that whatever you do in Rhino, it will be automatically synced here in Lumion. So, for example, let's say hypothetically that we want to maybe copy this. Even if we make a copy, if you make two, two, two pavilions like this, and once I release this, of course, this is absurd, you will not do this, but just want to show you. You will see that you will get to to uh, pavilions the uh, same way. So this is just to let you know that how the synchronization works. So it's it's live, you don't need to refresh anything. You simply model here and it will uh, automatically update in Lumion. The second thing that uh, I wanted to share with you is the way that you can uh, create a hole here in the ground. And uh, the way that you would do this, you would go here to the utilities and you would click here uh, on place and you would choose from the options here, you have the option of a cut. It says landscape cutter. You will just click here, and then you can simply, let's say, click there. And that's enough. And now you can select that, that land cutter that you just did. And you can simply drag it like this. And you can see that we're getting this red area. And this red area means that this is where we're gonna be cutting our, our model or our ground. And it's normal that you can see that now, once we're done with this, you can see how there is no flickering anymore. There is no flickering anymore because now we cut the hole in this ground so that our model in Rhino, of course, can, can work. But the same thing applies. For example, if I just extrude this on the, on the other side, then we'll have the same kind of flickering going on. So that's just to keep in mind. The thing that I wanted to share with you is uh, the way that the organization of layers works. So, so here you can see on the top that we have 
layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, layer five. Uh, this is what you will see also here. You don't have the organization of layers like you would have here in Rhino. And that's why it's always better to first, if you want to keep the material from Rhino, you want to apply it in Rhino and then you want to import that uh, or do the live sync here directly in Lumion. Why is that? For example, if I select this, you will see it will say here Rhino Lumion Workflow, that's the name of my file. And the, the, the thing that I cannot do here, I cannot actually replace individual materials right away because, for example, if I want to go here to materials, and uh, I need to click here, you can see, it says click on the imported model to modify its materials. So if I click here, it will just give me the option to modify one single material in the whole model. This means that, for example, if I choose, let's say, say something like, uh, let me see, for example, metal, and if I choose aluminum, for example, the whole object will become aluminum, which is absurd. You don't want to do this. For example, if you do, let's say, the wood everything will become the wood so this means that you want to organize your layers first in rhino like this and then you want to apply specific materials to those objects and then when you do the live sync then everything will be recognized so now i'm going to show you how this would look like if we open up a model that actually has materials applied to it okay so here we are in the new model and in this model which was prepared for enscape with enscape materials you will see here if i press the enscape rendering you will see that uh, the materials inside my landscape my landscape are already applied so you can see that we have cool distribution of the of the of the mapping and we have the materials there you can see how it looks on the inside and now we're going to try to recreate the same thing in Lumion and see how that correlates with this. So, uh, again, the same distribution of the layers, everything is organized here on the left, on the right, sorry. And now, the cool thing is that I already prepared the, the mapping. So, uh, if I do the texture mapping, you can see if I click the show mapping, it will actually show me like the box that I already prepared to have the, the mapping widget for all of these objects. That means that once uh, once, once I import this to Lumion, when I click Start Live Sync, let's see what happens. So if I open my Lumion window, you can see now that we have kind of different different story a little bit. Uh, you can see that some, some materials are recognized, some are not. For, for example, the water is recognized, but some of these other materials are not. And the reason is that they, they don't uh, necessarily have uh, loaded textures. So Initially, to start off, let's first uh, make the cut again uh, in our ground so that we have we don't have the flickering. So I'm gonna go here to the utilities. I'm gonna go to place and let's place the cut plane here. So I'm gonna create something here. Click and uh, let's take it and let's cut the, everything else. Okay, so something like like this. I'm not gonna be super precise because. This is just the concept. I just want to explain you the, uh, the, the, the idea behind it. So if we want to change some of these materials, uh, what do we do? We simply click here on all and uh, we need to go to the material uh, editor here. But now you can see how when I hover over, you can see how I don't get selected like the whole area. I just, I have, for example, material dark roof, material light roof, material blue ma marble, material glass and if I go back to my Rhino window if I go to my material editor here in uh, in Enscape you will see that this is where I actually uh, have those materials so all of these materials were already applied here in Rhino beforehand uh, in Enscape but you can also apply them either using V-Ray or using Rhino, or Rhino, Rhino materials so, uh, so if the materials are applied then they will be recognized like this and now it's it's very simple now all you need to do is actually just connect connect to the textures and connect the folders let's select marble yellow material yellow marble i'm going to click here and i'm going to click on standard and here i'm simply going to say choose color map i'm going to click there and here i'm simply going to choose my texture which is this one i'm going to click open and now you will see that if i zoom in this uh, this material will be applied and you can see that also the tiling is perfectly fine Maybe the color is not so maybe we can play around with color here and we can of course play with glossiness with Reflectivity how much we want this to be reflective. For example, this is something like a bump map usually in, in, uh, in other um, 
programs. So this is, for example, the, the idea. And now I'm simply going to pick every single uh, object. So for example, I'm gonna see, uh, click material blue marble. I'm going to go again to standard and choose the blue marble texture. And you can see that it's already applied and the texturing is perfectly fine. Again, you would like to, to, to make sure that you have correct you know, reflectivity and, and how you want your map to look like. But other than that, you're perfectly fine. And lastly, I'm going to use this and I'm gonna select, for example, uh, this wall. And let's create one more. This is going to be our red marble. And you can see that now the color is very off, but that's fine. Simply click colorization here and then you can change the glossiness, reflectivity, and so on. So now I'm going to simply do this for all of those additional materials that we have, and then we're gonna click here, save changes. Uh, just want to change the material glass. I want to show you how you can actually replace the material. So you don't need to necessarily, for example, this is the glass material, so you don't need to necessarily play around with it, add any textures. You can simply click here, you can go to glass, and for example, we can I'll use for example this rough glass you can simply click here and you will see that it will automatically update here in our screen which is quite cool so you can either you know replace the texture or replace the whole material with different kind of options that you have here available so now as i said i'm going to replace all of those and then uh, we're going to continue okay so here we are with the with the new materials some of them are replaced and some of them are the same as as the initial model so you can see here for example that i changed my my water a little bit so if i click on the water you can see that i change it with the azure pool option so there is this model that ca that comes with lumion this is what i changed everything else uh, remained the same and i also changed the grass so for example i wanted to share this with you so you can see the difference if if i zoom in like this let's say you can see that on the left i have a flat grass if i jo I, if i zoom in it you will see that it, it's a 2d grass but here uh, on the right side i have something or when I zoom in, you can see it's like a 3D grass, which is quite cool. Of course, this depends on, on how powerful your system is to support this, but in my case, uh, this is working fine now. And now comes the fun part. Now let's see uh, what else we can do. What what can we do to populate this scene with, with, with more interesting stuff? For example, let's let's share uh, let's share how to add more trees and how to populate the scene. So if you come here uh, in the objects area, you have the option here to uh, to click on the nature. When you click on the nature and you click on the place, you will have a lot of different options that you can choose from. You can see that we have a lot of options here with different kind of trees that, that we can pick from. And uh, next to each model, you have a, a scale version of the person so you can have an idea of how big this tree is. I think I like this one, broadleaf, so something like this. And let's pick, for example, this big one. So I'm going to come here in the background. I'm gonna click here. This is one tree. Then I can choose the next one and I can click here. Uh, then we can choose maybe some uh, some other one, click here, and so on. So you can populate these guys uh, however you want. And now uh, let's see if we can add some additional models, if we can add some more people, or if we can make this scene more uh, interesting. So if you go down here, you will see that it has a people and animals. If you click there, you can see we have a lot of different uh, options here for people. So uh, I can simply you know go through this and choose the th the one the ones that I like. So for example. Here is one of uh, the person that is sitting, so we can click on him. You can see that it actually recognizes the bench. So in this case, it's oriented in a wrong way, but let's click uh, anyways. And now let me show you how to fix it. So you can simply, you know, click here. You can click, uh, click here on the person uh, like this. And then you have the option to, to click on the rotate. And now you can simply, you know, click here like this. And you can see the different orientation. And then we can go to the place again and we can choose again uh, different kind of options. For example, there's another man here sitting, so we can put him there as well. And then of course we can also do the same thing, we can rotate him, so it all makes sense like this. Okay, so now of course if you want to move the person, you can simply click there and you have this arrow that you can use, so you can simply uh, click here and this is the orientation. Uh, and if you want to move, you simply need to click on the on the select option, click there, and then go to this arrow and move it. You can see how now you have the radius of the place of movement. And this is how that would work. Uh, now I'm going to add some additional furniture, for example, inside our inside our, our building. So for example, let's go in through the wall here. Let's go in this area. 
and uh, let's let's add something here so this time let's choose uh, maybe furniture indoor let's click on the place and let's find something that uh, would make sense for this kind of environment in this case i actually found that this kind are uh, i think uh, quite quite good for for this kind of example so let's uh, place two of them there and and in addition to that we can maybe you know place a person again so for example let's uh, put a person here like that so we can also click there we can put the woman here she's walking and so on so this is this is how you would populate people and this is how you would you know uh, create this so that it has some kind of realism to it because Okay, we put a person on the roof. That's also a possibility. For example, if you would like to replace the person, in this case, you have identical people here. So if you want to change it, simply click on it. And then here on the top right, you will see that there is this uh, arrow that you can click on. And then you have the option here of replace selection. You can click there and then we can maybe put somebody else here. We can click like this. And now we have a person who is on the roof uh, looking at a phone. That's perfectly fine. And now let's take a look at the weather options. Uh, this is where you will be able to control the sun, the sun brightness, uh, the cloud, cloud amount as well. So you can see the cloudy weather and the brightness. Uh, and then you know, on top of that, you also have the option to enable real skies. This will give you much more real realism and, and real conditions. So you can see how we have very cool shadows here based on the trees and everything else. And of course, you can also change the brightness of the sky. You can change the, the sun height. It depends on the, on the shot that you want to take. So you can see the difference in the sun, in the sun direction and what effects we'll get from, from, uh, from changing this kind of uh, orientation of the sun. Uh, you also have the option to select real sky. In this case, you can choose from polygon. Uh, you can choose uh, different kind of like HDRI images that you can use. For example, this one. You can see that we will get much different kind of feel. So this is something like a, like a, like a dusk or a dawn or something like this. You can, so whatever works for you and you think that uh, will give you a nice effect, you can you can use that. All right. So I found the sky that I like. Uh, this is the sky that I, that I've chosen. You can see uh, how it looks. And then also I replaced this. Uh, this grass so it, we have both uh, 3d grass on both sides and now let's take a look and let's see uh, how we can uh, export this image how we can create maybe some different kind of rendering styles uh, using this uh, these settings our next step is to choose the angles uh, the way that this works is that you only need to do is click here on the photo so we can have a couple of angles let me just pick one angle that that i like the most so maybe something like this let's say one cool thing here that i can do you can see how our perspective here is not very very good the way that this works is all you need to do is click here on add effect go to the camera and then here you have the option of two point perspective you click there and you will see now that our perspective just changed now the next thing that that you could do you can click here set an eye level and this will bring our camera to the eye level of 160 course if you want to edit it you can put it to 180 for example and you can see how it will bring up everything then we can again click on add effect and here you can see that we have options of changing the weather changing the skies changing the objects uh, having some some different kind of for example if you click on autumn colors you will see that now if I change this you can see the trees are going to change and also the saturation and the range. However, if you want to simply delete this uh, effect, you can click here, remove effect, and it will uh, turn it off. But we still have the two point perspective. However, you can disable the effect from here and you can see how we have different kind of, like some kind of crooked perspective here. But when we click on enable effect, it will straighten everything up. Then let's, let's maybe add something uh, more interesting. So in this case, we can have like some sort of a sketch similar to what you would have in uh, SketchUp you have this kind of like uh, sketches that you can export so for example if I click here you will see that it, everything will become white you're gonna have this kind of uh, effect of styrofoam and this is you know something that you can play around with if you want to create different kind of renderings for example you can also add let's see for example a cartoon you can see the different uh, the different options but uh, if you want to, to delete this one, then you will have this kind of effect as a cartoon effect. And then, of course, you have different options. You have this one, which is quite cool. 
uh, it's called Bl blueprint and you can see it has like the grid so you can pretty much like export this kind of effects if you want for your projects lastly you have also the options to to put uh, to put maybe color correction in this case if i click there you will see that i will have the option to change the temperature of the image to change the tint of the image you know to adjust the brightness the contrast so some things that you would do in, in photoshop you can actually do it directly here you can change the gamma correction uh, very cool interesting stuff so it's all about you to play around and pick the style that you want the most for example if you do the sketch you can see this is quite cool and for example let's say that i want to export this image i'm gonna click here store, store camera it's gonna give me that shot and then if i want to to use it uh to use it one more time i can click on this guy and now i can add again the same kind of effects so i can again add the camera two point perspective but for example here we can change the weather so i want to show you how to add rain if you want to add a rain this is for example the options you have rain or snow and you can see how we quickly how quickly we can change the weather and then of course this is like uh, what, what is the phase of the raining? What is the particle quantity? What is the particle size? You can see we can make it smaller or bigger. Okay, so right now it's snowing. We have some some kind of effect of uh, Let's say a winter effect. We can also add a little bit of fog so you can create quite cool images in a very short amount of time and then simply click st store camera and you're done and if you want to export this simply click render photos so for example this is place where you will adjust the resolution so for example if i want to take both of them i can also save different maps so i can use them later on in post-production if i want for photoshop but if i don't i would simply click for example print and i would save it here i would save it let's say render one click save and now this would render out uh, my images. All right, so the final renderings are done and I just want to share with you how these shots uh, look like when rendered out. And also I did a couple of extra uh, trials. I wanted to, to, to see what else we can get. These are some of the shots that I, I did from the different angles. So you can see how easy it is to create these kind of uh, effects. So yeah, that we all hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you're interested to know how to create movies and animations directly in Lumion for your projects with all the effects, you can watch the extended tutorial on our Patreon page where you'll get access to all of our other extended tutorials and project files as well for just $15 a month. By supporting us here on Patreon, you'll help us a lot to bring you even more interesting content and tutorials. If you'd like a structured step-by-step -step approach in learning Rhino and Grasshopper architectural presentation, animation, rendering, you can apply for our Rhino for Architects 2.0 course, first link in the description.